I'm really challenged to, to pray greater than I've ever prayed in my entire life. Uh, and I pray that, that we, God will put us on one accord so that we can be effective in the, in the kingdom of God. And we need to pray. We, need, we, we really need to pray um, and surrender ourselves to God so that he can use us in this hour because if you, if you look at everything that's going on around you, it can be very challenging, it can be very intimidating. And uh, that's not the intent of God for us. We don't need to be intimidated. We don't need to be that challenged. We need to really trust and believe God. And, uh, and, and if we pray on one accord, I believe it'll make, make a difference. Uh, I was thinking about, as I was praying and trying to hear the voice of God today, uh, I was thinking about how good God is regardless to the circumstances, regardless to the situations in life, God is good. He's good, and I really want that to be on your heart. I want you to know that he's good, that he knows where we are, he knows our circumstances, and, uh, and he's sovereign. The word sovereign means that God is in control. Uh, he can do anything at any time that he desires to do. So I, I pray that we all will put our hands in, put our lives in his hand and trust him. That's going to be key. Um, I'm, I, as, I was, as I was preparing to come tonight, uh, God, had, he's given me a word. And, and I want to and I want to go into the word tonight. And I want to uh, I want us to get a good understanding of what God is saying. He, he, the word He gave me is this: uh, Psalms twenty-seven, verses thirteen and fourteen. And and in the word is where David was having some challenges, and he really was trusting God to protect him and, and keep him, and uh, and uh, just like we're doing right now. Uh, and, and 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 truly, God would always come through. But David was amazing. David David knew that no matter what he went through, what his challenges were. He understood that he would, if he was in the earth, if he, he said, if I made my bed in hell, no matter why I am, God, you're there. And so that's important to realize so that we won't be so afraid when we hear these negative reports. And then I want you to take authority over, over the things that you hear, that, that you know don't line up with your life, don't line up with your faith. Begin to rebuke that. Don't, don't just receive it. Uh, rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and, and keep yourself filled with the word. I want to get into the word, but I want us to pray first. Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise for the victory tonight. Father God, I thank you for everyone that is tuned in tonight. And I'm asking God that you will bless them. Bless them with ears to hear and eyes to see. Father God, and, and bless them with a, with a heart to receive, to receive your word. Oh, Father, and we uproot anything that's, a, that's right, trying to run interference with your word, penetrating our hearts and penetrating our ear canal and penetrating our sight. We rebuke the devil. We rebuke the works of the flesh. We denounce anything that will try and, and hinder faith in you from getting in. And Father God, we give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise for the victory. I surrender everything to you. I really want you to have your way tonight. I want it to be you and not me. I surrender in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I know you got your Bibles. I want you to go with me to Psalms chapter 27 to 8, verses 13 and 14. I want to read it. And then, uh, and then I want to get out of what God is saying to us. Um, Psalms 27, 13 says, I would have fainted. I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. I want you to say right now, I will live and not die. Rebuke that devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will live and not die. And, 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 and David said, he said, I, he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In verse 14, he says this. He said, wait on the Lord. He said, be of good courage. <laughs> good courage comes from the Holy Spirit. I always say that, but it does. You don't have it on your own. I mean, we can think we have it, but trust me, good courage is courage that will, will allow you to endure the test of time. So he said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The believer, now this is what he said. He said, I would have fainted. To, to faint means to give up or to give out or to run out. And, uh, and, and a believer should never faint. We should never. I mean, we can get weary. We can, get, we can have trials and we have tribulations that challenge us. But the believer in God, those who really have their faith in God and, 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 and trusting that God will make good decisions, 
concerning them, whatever decisions God make, if I love God, they are for my good regardless. But the believer in God, get this in your spirit, will faint. They will faint if they run out of faith in God. What did I just say? I said the believer in God will faint. They will faint if they run out of faith in God. Faith is a usable entity. When we say we have faith in God, we have to have faith in what God is going to do his decision. We can't just pray and say, well, God, you know, I want to do this. No, no, no. When you really have a right relationship with God, you trust God to do what is best for you. I trust God to do what is best for me. Uh, so let me give you this again. The believer, the one who really believes in God, who really trusts in God, who, who understands that, look, I'm, I'm really trusting you, God, to, to save me, to keep me from hurt, harm, or danger, to protect me. The believer in God will faint. David said, what? I would have fainted unless I had believed. I had believed unless I had believed, believed, had faith. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The believer, the ones who believe in God will faint if they run out of faith. If we run out of faith in God, now you can have faith in anything. You have faith in yourself. I can have faith in this seat I'm sitting in. And I can run out, this seat can break down and, 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 I, and different things can break. But let me tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. God will not break down. God won't break down. No, 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 no. There's no, there's no, there's no breaking down with God. He don't, he don't, it's, it's, he can carry you, he can take care of you. And, and I want to say this, I'm going to sneak this one in. Scripture says this, to be out of the body, Paul wrote this, he says to be out of the body is to be with the Lord. And he's talking about the soul, he's talking about the spirit. I think one of the biggest things that really hinder us in life is the fear of death. Jesus said something else, he said there are those that are here. He said although they die, they shall live again. We have eternal life with the Lord. And I want to get that. I snuck that one in. That was a little nugget that you need to hear because I feel the spirit of fear and people are afraid. Don't be afraid. Rebuke that spirit of fear and really put your trust and confidence in God. I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit. But listen, the believer in God will faint if they run out of faith in God. We must maintain our faith. We must maintain our faith in God. Our faith in God is our most powerful weapon against fear and unbelief. Our faith not in ourselves, not in what we think, not in what we feel, but when we trust God to order our steps and energize us from the inside and cause us to move in certain directions, that's faith in God. When things don't work out, that we pray that they don't come together like we thought they would come together, then we trust God when however they come together, we keep our focus on God. So our faith in God is our most powerful weapon against fear and unbelief. Get that in the spirit. Our faith in God. Now get this, if a Christian thinks uh, if we think we can walk in strong faith without continuing to take the word of God, continue to read the word of God and hear the word of God, we're fooling ourselves, brothers and sisters. We're deceiving ourselves. Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, Faith cometh. Faith in God cometh by hearing, and hearing cometh by the word of God. You, we got to hear more about God than we hear about this, this virus, about people, you know, in the hospital, sick, this happened to this person. This, no, no, no. We need to hear more. Of, we, are, we are entities in the kingdom of God. We're just, we're in the earth serving, but we're, we, we live in heaven. We, we, so what we should be doing is we should be hearing more of the word, more of the word, more of the word, so that we can, we can use that as a weapon against the works that is going on here. So if a, if a Christian thing that we can walk in strong faith without continuing to take the word of God daily, every chance you get to get the word. We are fooling ourselves. It, 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 is, it is a battle during this time to keep really and truly believing God. It's a, it's a big challenge. It's a, it's, it, it is challenging to maintain faith during this kind of challenge. There's a faith that the Holy Spirit who indwells us gives to us but he can only give it to us if we have the word of God in us. He gives us understanding of what, what we're reading, what we're studying. So, so, so the, we can, our faith can increase the more we read, the more we hear the word of God. So this is what I want you to think about. If you really want faith in God, you want the faith that's going to work, the faith that's going to help. I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this. Consider giving God so much time every day. Think about that. Consider cutting the news off. Consider walking away from all bad news. Just do it. Try it. Walk away from all bad news. Then hear me. Get the word. 
get the word in you. Get it in and feed yourself the word. It, 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 the word of God builds faith in God and faith in God defeats the work of the enemy. It takes a full confidence in God, a full confidence in God, regardless to the circumstances, to stay focused on God. It takes a full confidence in God. I really believe God is real. I believe God can keep me. I believe God makes decisions concerning whatever he wants to do, he can do. That interaction, that exchange happens. See, see a lot of times we as human beings want to be in control. This ain't going to happen. That ain't going to wait. Wait a minute. You just want eternal life. You want, you want, regardless of whatever happens, you want to be with God. Hear that? Hear that? Then you release your life over to God. You, then you get out of fear. That's how you get out of fear. That's how you get out of worry. And that's how you get out of fear. It takes a force, and, I'm, and I'm, keep, I'm saying this because it's so critical. It's exactly what God's given me to give you. It takes a full confidence in God, regardless to the circumstances. David wrote this over in Psalms 139 and 8. Get this in your spirit. If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. <laughs> he said, if I take my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Hear that by the Spirit. God is beyond our circumstances. God is beyond the earth. God keeps on moving. Here's another thought. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply. A lot of times as we're going through and we're wondering, you hear, you're running out of this, you're running out of that. Don't, don't let that trouble you. If God will provide. God is able to provide for you. He took a, and I said this before, he took a whole nation into a wilderness and took care of them. I mean, God can, God will, God will provide for you whatever we need. And this is the thing that I, that I realized. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 19. I'm going to read the whole thing to you so you have, but, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is the thought. This is the thought in this. No matter what happens, God is there. No matter what the circumstances are, God is there. There is a peace in that. There's a peace in that. God, I believe that. God, I trust you. So, so it eliminates a certain amount of fear. Then, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. That eliminates more fear. That's what you want to do. You want to take God's word and eliminate. You want to eliminate all the fear and all the insecurities. You don't want to line up with what the reporters are saying. You don't want to keep repeating, well, this happened over here and I heard the pastor died. I heard that person died. No, forget that stuff, man. Folks been dying a long time. They're going to keep dying. Hear me in, in love. You can't stop them. You can't bring them back. If God wants them back, he'll bring them back. Hear me. That's in love now. But what you want to do is you want, we want to make sure that we are right in God's divine will. We want to make sure we, 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 are, we, are, we are right with God and in right standards with God. So, so, so here it is. I don't want you to stay so so locked into the news and you have to not want yourself to stay so locked into the news i'm trying to i believe god's given us a word to help us tonight and i believe if we take the word then we'll be helped because then, trust me it's fear in there a lot of it brothers and sisters and i rebuke it but it's a lot of it so we just need to be cast that down we begin to rebuke it we need to become entities of faith entities of love perfect love cast out fear well, perfect love is in my faith in God because God is perfect love. So I, my faith in him indwelling me will see the manifestation of this fear, the spirit of fear that's in the earth moved. We wanted to move on out of here in the name of Jesus. Bless God. Hallelujah. So the question is, how do I maintain my hope and I hope maintain my faith during this challenging time? The answer is to keep getting faith. I can maintain my faith but I keep getting faith. I cannot take a day, hear the word, five days and hear the news. Take a day, hear the word, six days and hear the No, no, no. I got to hear the word of God every day, brothers and sisters. Every chance I can. Put, I mean, put, I got apps on my phone. I can just, when I'm, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm sitting up at night and I can't rest, and I find it comes up. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm asleep and have, I'm awakened in the morning, fresh. So you, the word of God is powerful. It's more powerful than the intuitive sword. It goes to the very mind. It begins to heal us and deliver us and set us free from all kinds of things and everything. Okay, so we have to seek God daily. We have to seek his word daily. And then to get this, remember this. God has a word for me every day. Based on the challenges I'm going to meet that day, based on the challenges I'm going to meet that day, God has a word for us sorry, every day. Every, every day he has a word. Every day he has a word for us. We have to trust that. 
We have to trust the word that he give us. How do I get it? What's in here? Here's the Bible. What's in here? Right here. Get, get in here and, and, and trust what he give you. Open it and say, God, lead me. And, and then trust him to, to lead you to the right place. And the spirit will, will agree when you find the right scripture. If your spirit don't agree, then you ain't on the right scripture. But God will give you a word every day. Trust him to give you a word. He knows what you're going to go through. He knows the challenges we're going to have every day. So we have to see God daily. We have to see his word daily, which God gives to us. We have to get, get the revelation daily. Revelation is what his Holy Spirit revealed to me, what God is saying. Give me understanding. The Bible, the Bible spirits are discerning you. You know, a lot of times people think they're deep and they, it's not an intellectual piece. It's a spiritual piece. It's alive. It's God speaking. The word of God is speaking. That's why a lot of people pick up the Bible and they, I don't, I didn't even understand what I read. Well, you need revelation, precious. You need God to help you. So God, please give me revelation of this word. Yeah, do it. God, man, let me tell you something. If you can get revelation, you can live. You can live a life that you can't imagine. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to hear David. We're going to hear it. We're going to really hear the word every chance we get. Then we're going to do is we're going to get the revelation. We're going to ask God to do it. Now the Holy Spirit is working revelation. The Spirit of God is inside of us. He's working the revelation. He's revealing to us. The more we seek him, like I don't understand. If you don't understand, so Holy Spirit, I'm still not clear. I'm still not clear. Holy Spirit is not like man to get impatient. Man will get so impatient with you. You don't understand. But God, the Holy Spirit won't do that to you. He'll work with you. Don't, don't, don't put God with man. God is totally different. God is more patient than you can ever imagine. And, and don't, don't be intimidated as you approach God. God loves you. He loves me. We got a relationship. He's our father. He wants us to be smart. He wants us to be sharp. He wants us to be weapons in the earth against the works of the enemy. So, so we get the revelation from God. We get the word. The next thing we have to do is we have to trust God to know what is best. We really don't know what is best. When we, when, when, when we, when we say God is going to supply my needs, you have to look for what God supplies. Let's say, for instance, if you, if you thought the light bill was going to come today, and it don't come till Friday. Listen, you trust God to keep lights on till Friday. Because he's teaching you faith. Don't say, oh God, I need to get my light bill. But no, 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 no. <laughs> that means you don't trust him. No, no, just sit back and say, God, give me peace. Give me peace because I know this bill is due. I know these things are going on. But God, give me peace. That's how you develop a relationship of faith in God. So that's that's important. You, you got to and, and, and what's going on is and don't 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 receive sickness. You know, just just rebuke all sickness if you if you if you if God show you something coming in your direction. Trust God and say I rebuke that. I don't receive that. That will not happen in the name of Jesus. You got that kind of power. And you better use it. It goes on now. I've got some more notes here. It says when we, when we say God's supplying my need, we have to we have to realize that God knows exactly what those needs should be. We can't, we have, to, we have to conclude only God knows what we need. You have to conclude that only God knows, and then we have to accept what God does concerning our needs. See, sometimes we think we need one thing and it's another, so that's what God is. So he's sovereign. He knows more than we. He's our father. He knows. He created us. He knows. He knows. He knows. You know, God is omni, omnipresent. That means that he's everywhere all the time. He's omniscient. He knows. He knows everything. I mean, he knows everything. But we have to turn to him, tap into him as a resource. And he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. God is God. Thank you, Jesus. So you got to remember now, in this unfamiliar territory that we're traveling in right now, we need God every second. We have no idea what we need to exist in this in this season, in this territory. So we got to trust God. Now remember, God knows what we need. There must be a surrendering to God, like you, like the the mind, the flesh, or fight. And you know, say, you know, you need this. You need it. You got to have this. You know, no, relax. Whatever you, if you ask him to bless you with it and supply it and you trust him, then you got to re re release yourself from that burden of thinking you know. And then look at what he, the people, the people of Israel, when he brought them into the, into the, into the wilderness, they said, we're hungry. God gave them manna, what they called it manna. Manna means what it did. They didn't know what it was, but it was, it was the, it was the food from heaven that they needed based on their journey. It wasn't something they were familiar with. And so you gotta, you gotta hear that. God will give you, you gotta, you, well, I need me some pork chop. You don't need no pork chop. God, I need no pork chop. Get you some, get you some chicken or whatever he give you. Appreciate that. Uh, if he just give you a little old piece of bread and put you some toast on, that's all you need. <laughs> now, no, I know you like to eat, but listen, I'm telling you right. So trust me, God knows what you need and you gotta trust him, especially during this time. In this territory, we, we, this is unfamiliar territory for the believer. Oh, God knows what we need. We must surrender. God supply 
Uh, his supply of my need does not have to be what I think it is. It must be what God is doing. It must be what God is doing. Now remember this, brothers and sisters. I want you to hear this in love. God knows how to take care of us. He knows exactly how to take care of us. God knows. I tell you one thing. God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. So this is what I want to want to leave with you. What's going to be critical is that we must trust God. We must, we must trust God. We must get that word in us. And then we must pray out loud that word. We must speak it. If we don't understand, we must go to the Holy Spirit and say, give me revelation, please. We must be patient with the Holy Spirit as he's teaching us what's going on. He don't give you a full revelation if you don't need a full revelation. If you start walking in the word, then the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you. Don't be distracted. Don't, don't let things distract you. Keep your focus on God. You can keep your focus on God and have the best time you've had. My, today, Lisa and I had a wonderful day. We celebrated, but I tell you one thing, our mind is really, our house is settled, and we're focused on the Lord. We're focused on the Lord. Hear me, brothers and sisters. God love us. I know it's a challenging time, but I tell you one thing, there's another sign to this. This is a great time. This is an unprecedented time. This is time where you can really sit and relax your mind and let God speak to you and give you wisdom and wisdom and creative ideas, and then you can pursue it. You can pursue it. This is a great time, too. You can, you can pursue the call of God that's on your life. You can pursue getting, getting your environment better, being, being, being better at who you are as far as loving folk and being at peace and surrendering your life, being happy. You can, you can be happy. You can be happy no matter where you are. Listen, if you will gain more faith in God, life will get better. It'll get better. You've got to really take your mind. Don't be in the house arguing and looking at folk rolling out, finding fault. <laughs> I mean, the human being is something else. It's up there, that crazy stuff. I rebuke that crazy thinking. We're going we're gonna to walk in love. We're going to enjoy this journey. We're going to trust God. Brothers and sisters, you have no idea of how glad that you joined me tonight, but I really want God to impart this word into you and you to be blessed with it. I want to pray for you right now. Then we're going to do an offering. We always do an offering. And, and um, and, and I want the reason that we do it is because it's not so much that God needs it. God provides for us. But you need it if you believe in God to promote you financially, promote you in any way. Because the Bible says the tithe are holy. It belongs to God. So, so you, you, you need to be obedient in everything. If you're going to do the word, you got to do the whole word. You can't just pick and choose. You can't say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that pastor. I'm going to get my faith up and everything. Then when I start talking about you giving, you're going to shut it down? <laughs> that, that, ain't, that ain't smart. Because you gotta, if you're gonna, if you're gonna walk with God, everything that He's asking you to do is critical for you to have the life He's ordained you to have. Let's pray. I want to first ask you, you know, and I talk about you know putting our faith in God, and our confidence in God, and increasing. But it cannot do that without Jesus. Jesus said something else amazing. He said, "No man can come to me except the Father draw him." He said, "Then no man can even know the Father unless I take him to him." He said, there will be many that will prophesy in my name and say, I cast out demons in your name. But I'll say unto them, you get away from me, you workers of iniquity, for I know you not. The question is, do Jesus know you and do you know him? And if you don't know him, then he can teach you who he is. If, you, if you're feeling unction that he's pulling at you right now, I want you just to bow your heads and I want you to say, God, I want you to forgive me for my sins and my trespasses. Jesus, I need you. Please, Master, I need you. Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior, Jesus. I, I receive you. I yield to you. With my mouth, I confess. I agree with God that you are the sacrificial lamb, that you are the one that I can put my trust in. You are my, my high priest seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me. I agree that you are Lord. You are the master of my life, and I surrender my life to you. So I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ, you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Therefore, I should have eternal life. Receive that now, brothers and sisters, the giving. I want you to be obedient in your giving. You can, you can give. I don't have my thing, but you ought to have the number by then. I'm sure they're texting it to you real fast if they can. It's, it should be coming across real good. I mean, pe people be doing stuff behind the scenes. I thank God for every one of them because I tell you one thing. I, I get a lot. I can give the word. That's about it. Listen, I love you. I thank God for you. I want you to be blessed. And we're going to come back Sunday. But, but through the week, don't forget, now we got to get that word in us. I want you to really focus in on getting that word in you and, and letting it do and cutting that news off, that negative. And if people call you that want to talk negative about somebody, say, listen, let me call you back and take your time by calling them back. Hey, I love you. God bless you. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ.
have 